Woo, Which private matches. All right, guys. So this is going to be our first map breakdown of uh, of Destiny. And since new maps are new, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, I'm probably going to do that anyways. I'm going to try and have at least one to two of these coming out per week just because it'll be fairly easy to do. I'm um, starting off with Anomaly, clearly. Um, and the reason why I'm playing is Control is just so I can... Um, Give you guys a better idea of the location I'm talking about with A, B, and C. And this is mainly going to cover like skirmish, um, or even a force setup, depending on the direction that competitive destiny goes in, um, and you bettering your game and understanding these maps. Um, the reason why I didn't do this earlier is basically because uh, I couldn't do it to the full potential that you know I could now with private matches, and I just really wanted to wait it out until, or in hopes that they would eventually put these. In. Um, but let's get started with this one. So we got Alpha Spawn, which isn't always the best spawn, but um, A Spawn on this map is actually the best. Um, how you can tell this, essentially, we spawned on the high ground. If you look, C is clearly, at least room-wise, this spot is probably one of the strongest spots on the map, to defend at least, um, and it's clearly higher up than the C flag. Um, so if you're in a threes playlist, and I'm just going to kind of talk and riff here a little bit. Um, I don't really have a planned script for this, just because I'm going to kind of speak of what's on my mind, and hopefully you guys get something out of this. But um, So generally, on the server match, uh, if I'm playing skirmish, I'll run immediately out here, and then go straight to catwalks. A lot of people peek around here. It is the faster option, but the less ex expected option that also gives you more cover subsequently is on this left side. I would highly... Um, discourage you from going here because if I go over to this side where you're coming up um, you have a much like let's say I'm here you have a much cleaner angle over here where most people stand right here in the middle because um, they're gonna stay in the middle because this gives them cover not necessarily this little ledge here um, and they'll have a much easier shot getting over here whereas over there you have a little bit of a cleaner angle on them um, they have a little bit of a less clean angle on you um, it's a little bit of a 50-50, but most people choose this side, and that is a much better um, place to set up, at least initially, as an individual. Um, and something I wanted to talk a little bit about as well is shape. Um, and by shape, I mean team shape. Um, on defense, uh, if you're playing a little more passively or the enemy team is a little more aggressive, you want to stick together and have a very closed shape. Um, what I mean by that is... You kind of want to stick together. Um, I don't mean like literally like one person here, one person here, and one person here. Um, I just mean like in the same room or like maybe I have two people in this room and then one person in this lane over here. Um, you're just kind of slowly moving around together. Whereas if you're in a more offensive shape, you'll want to be a tiny bit more spread out. Um, you obviously don't want to have like two people here and then one person way all the way across the map. That should be dumb um, because then they'd be overextending and they'd be an easy kill for the enemy who... Um, because they'll, they'll be alone, essentially. Um, so that's basically the main idea of setting up on maps, um, both on offense and defense. You generally want to take the high ground um, and hold it if you are uh, if you get the good spawn. For example, so this one's A. It's generally going to be A flag, by the way. It's almost always A flag, except the only exception I can really think of off the top of my hand is um, Shores of Time, where you have C that's a little bit stronger just because you have all that... Um, dominant space to work with over by C flag between between or between C flag and B flag um, open space and shores of time, um, but on this map you really want to stick up at this higher ground um, and so you might be asking what do you want to do if you're over on C so let's say I spawned over here let me just run over there real quick <laughs> I got my super um, so let's say you spawned over here I believe the spawn is like right here um, and you, you, I mean, you're clearly under this advantage. I mean, A is very clearly higher up than you are, um, and B is obviously the very center of the map, um, at least in terms of a place you could stand comfortably. Um, so, where do you want to go from here? Because you clearly don't, like, this is the obvious push, to go right to the center of the map, um, and just, while you're here, look at all the angles you're exposed from. So you have an angle there, an angle there, an angle there, and an angle there if this thing isn't in the way. So you have generally three angles that are always looking at you, possibly four when it's you know on the opposite side. Um, this is a terrible place to be, even down here, because then you granted you have these two locked down potentially, especially if you have two players here watching both these areas, but you have no defense against pushes on your flanks, and that's just like a terrible place to set up. Generally, if I'm pushing off C flag, um, I want my team along with myself 
to be pushing around to the side here. Um, I generally always go with this right side. Um, it is the safest push, at least in my opinion. You can definitely go to that left side, um, depending on your facing and whether or not you have their tendencies, but the disadvantage with pushing through this little tunnel is the fact that it is a little tunnel. Um, an A-flag is obviously going to get here way before you could ever even hope to. Um, they'll have a great defensive setup here, especially if they have shotgunners um, sitting around the corners and stuff. So generally you want to push around to the right of C-flag, um, and you can really take take it to the enemy a lot faster that way. So if I run straight up over here, I'm just using Mida by the way so I can run faster um, and just get around the map a little bit quicker. But um, look, I'm already at the high ground right from that spot to this spot. Um, and I'm, I'm essentially on an even playing field in terms of height advantage with A. Um, they still have a little bit of the stronger spot, but you can take that space um, at a fairly equal rate um, other than the fact that you are uh, the offensive team while they are the de facto defensive team um, in a way. And I, I, by controlling the space, I don't mean if you're on A or you get the good spawn just like fucking camp here. You obviously don't want to do that. Um, because camping against an organized team is very easy to overthrow just by pushing from multiple directions, hitting fast and hard, almost with a blitz, blitzkrieg type of strategy, um, and, and just doing things that way. But um, this is generally a really good initial setup. Um, and obviously a lot of these things are going to change on the fly. You won't be standing here for like, you know, 10 minutes and the match is going to be over. Um, you will always be holding this position. It's going to flip-flop constantly. Um, you will always be contested for your space, and you will always be contesting for the space that you want. Um, but generally, the main rule of thumb for any map um, is to stick to the higher ground. And now that I've kind of covered that stuff as best as I can in this allotted time, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my favorite spots to be. First one, I already kind of talked about when I push out of initial spawn from A, is over here. Um, I, this is probably one of my favorite spots, spots to start out off at, um, because you have an easy pushback behind this cover. Um, and you can get a really good angle on the enemies that usually line up there, especially if they are more inexperienced players. Um, more inex more experienced players, however, will be pushing over that side, and that really just comes down to radar management. Um, if they are over on that side, I generally like to peek out here maybe once. If they see you, I would not peek again, because you have all the space to get hit in, um, and you, know, you, you generally don't want to double peek ever, especially against a good player. Um, if you clearly have the advantage, and you know, fucking go for it, but even then, it's a little bit of risky challenge. Um, sometimes if I'm not getting any bites up on the catwalk, I'll push around here and see if I can get a pick over here. Um, I generally, and I, you know, I would generally advise against pushing in on any enemy unless you've gotten at least one pick on, on them. Um, by pick, I mean taking down the enemy, uh, or one player on the enemy team. Um, if you push in without doing that, um, it's, there's a very good chance that it's kind of a it could be a draw where you just all trade. Um, you know, you're gonna get, you're gonna lose the gunfight. You know, you, you want to go in with as much advantage as possible. Um, and, and if you're a sniper, you generally want to be sitting on the enemy's flanks. Um, I know a lot of people are probably gonna disagree with that. We're like, you know, I can just run in there and get snipes head on. Um, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, but against a good enemy, you want to be catching them off guard with your sniper. I would also generally advise with having two shotgunners and only one sniper, unless you just have like two sniping gods in your team, um, because most maps in Destiny are very shotgun favored. Um, with new sniper rifle changes, they do feel a tad bit slower um, after a little bit of uh, play with them, so um, I, I would just be wary about having like three snipers on your team or anything like that, at least in a um, very sweaty match. But uh, So back to what, what I was talking about. So places I like to be, I like to be on that catwalk spot um, if I'm defending A. I really just like to take control of this entire upper platform area. If I'm facing towards this hallway, um, I generally like to post up here, or even sometimes I'll jump up, get a quick snipe, and hop back down. Um, things like that. This is also a really good spot to cover your flank with this little rock and defend pushing enemies from both this little doorway and uh, that hallway over there. Um, and this is really your transitioning space. I would highly advise against transitioning through that little space because if you do transition over here, right when you pop through, you can be hit from B flag, you can be hit from other side of catwalk, you can be flanked from here, you can be hit from the lower side, that lower side, that area. Um, you know, you, you can just be basically cluster effed uh, in this one space if you push through here at any time. Um, so if you are playing, unless you have a surefire kill in that area, 
with a shotgun, um, I would highly advise sticking to the outsides of the maps, especially if you're a sniper. Um, just getting picks that way, because the outsides of the maps are the key to your flanking snipes, and the highest chance that you will get kills, um, especially as a sniper. Um, if you're a shotgunner, you could push through there. Um, it's definitely not the wrong move, but just be aware that you do have all these angles looking at on you, and you'll have to move or transition very quickly from these areas. I would definitely not sit in this space or the opposite sides. Uh, equivalent. Um, another space I wouldn't sit in, as I kind of covered earlier, is B. Um, you just kind of have to pick your angle smart, especially on this map. Um, this is another really obvious angle to be in. Um, generally, I don't snipe too much from here, like looking in here, because you can always be flanked from over here. Uh, if I'm going to snipe from this area, I generally back up and try and bait people through this doorway um, to come at me, and I'll generally get a quick snipe as they pass through, or I'll pull out the last one or something and just burn them down as they approach, um, or just use a shotgun and bait them through if you're doing that kind of play. Um, this is a decent spot to snipe from if you're back in this area and not in that front area um, because you do have a fairly decent angle in on B flag if someone's exposing themselves. Um, you have pretty good cover due to this box. Um, but I, again, I wouldn't hang around here uh, for a super long time if you can help it. Um, this is another spot that's great to defend from because you can use this box here to cover your angles um, as you attack or uh, fire on approaching enemies from this angle and this angle um, and those kinds of things. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, I'm definitely missing some things because there's a lot to cover and I can talk about this pretty much endlessly. Um, so if you guys have any more questions about these maps, feel free to ask me in the comments below and all those kinds of things. Um, that's the general flow of this map. Generally, in terms of like enemy movement, um, if it's an experienced team, they might have one guy, if he's a shotgunner going through there, that's rare though, but most times the enemy pushes up to this top area, they'll send a more aggressive player um, down those stairs with sniper cover from up here um, and really attack the enemy on that front while taking the high ground advantage um, and pushing down through this little doorway onto the enemy. Um, and then sometimes they'll push up through here as well and just kind of try and cluster F them in that way. Um, whereas if you're the offensive enemy coming from C, you kind of want to be prepared for that. Maybe push up early um, and catch them off guard as they try and push through and get you. Um, just be, keep in mind though that as the offensive team, you are going to be pretty much constantly at a disadvantage because the enemy, due to the way the radar works in Destiny, will be able to see where you're coming from uh, once you hit like the halfway point across the map, So uh, depending on where they are. So just keep those things in mind. Pick your angles well. Um, never stand in the open. Like Don't just be standing here obviously and just trying to snipe down there because you have just such easy angles on you from lots of different locations um, so yeah and if supposedly there's like dead ghosts in these maps somewhere I heard so if you guys are into that whole grimoire thing you go look for those as well I'm probably gonna hang around here and look for it uh, after the video <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope it helped you guys out just with some knowledge dropping uh, if you have any advice now you want me to cover these maps in terms of like positioning and stuff like that more accurately or maybe some stuff that you guys are having trouble with um, let me know in the comments below and I was the Wiggling Wolf and I'll see you guys in the next video